Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today for our first ever live webinar. I'm here with David Campbell, he's CEO at Boxman Studios, and since 2009 uh, we've been creating incredibly unique and engaging experiences, and we've been doing it using modified shipping containers. Uh, first of all, unfortunate loss from the U.S. team, but we are still advancing, so congratulations to them. I'm sure all of you were watching uh, back at home or at work or wherever you guys were at. Um, and that actually leads us right into today's topic. We're going to talk about how to capitalize on brand experience at different sporting events. Oh, sorry, we got a little bit of an echo. One second. Just minimize that, maybe. Um, so, just to jump right into it, David, with uh, HDTV sports being streamed constantly, uh, like the World Cup, people are watching on their screens, they're watching on tablets, computer, um, there's a big push to say that maybe live, live sporting events aren't as great as, don't, don't have the appeal they once did, mm -hmm. and a lot of brands and agencies are even wondering why, why activate at sporting events. Mm -hmm. So, so what's, the, what's the push to continue to do so? Yeah, no, I, I would contend that there's nothing like a live experience, and I think that, that, that we all can acknowledge that there's there's a multitude of influences that are coming to us every day, but but really having that experience one-on-one uh, -on -one is, 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 uh, is, is a very powerful, powerful message. I mean, let, let's be real, uh, we've been very fortunate to, to work with a multitude of brands at a number of different events from professional sports to college sports to even little leagues over the last couple of years, and, and it continues to amaze me at, at the brands that align themselves with those type of events uh, and done well can really get some some amazing uh, returns on their investments. Uh, it, it, it was, I think I heard the other day, that 50 million people went to a college football game last year. We were fortunate to be at the VCS Championship and, and the Rose Bowl, 94,000 people at, at one event. Well, those those kind of numbers are, are not something to, to uh, to discredit and and if you can align your brand or you can expand the experience associated with that that event, uh, then ultimately we think that it has a lot of power and a lot of lot of a uh, lot of ability uh, going forward. And, and when we say expand that experience, we talk about the, the the driveway to driveway experience. How do you how do you how do you make it that much better? Okay, so I, I remember we talked a little bit before we started here about the driveway to driveway experience. Oh, what exactly what exactly does that mean? Yeah, the event or the experience doesn't start and end with the first whistle or the first pitch and and, and, and the final uh, final outcome. It, it really starts with uh, when you leave your your proverbial driveway, right? And and, and uh, there was an example that we worked on with with Hyundai where we had two concurrent uh, tours going on for uh, for the college sports or college football, uh, and and the intent was to expand that experience. So we we were able to activate prior to the to the game and really build a, a man cave if that's a fair way to say it that would would interact with with uh, with college college of sports fans but but it's it's that expansion of that experience it's it's that uh, what do you do before the game what do you do after the game uh, it doesn't have to just be that that, that immediate time period all right all right so I know earlier we were talking about um, the kind of communities that that are centered around sports mm -hmm. and uh, part of that driveway to drive experience I know myself uh, I'm a huge Panthers fan that's our backyard team um, there really is a whole event. I wake up, I, I put on my gear, and I get and I meet up with a lot of friends. Um, and you said that you believe pretty heavily in that community. Uh, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. What, what that community means? Yeah, yeah, we believe that a community is two people joined together for a common goal. So, so technically, we're building a community here in this webinar. You and I are sitting in a part of that community. Obviously, the participants are part of that community. Well, if you believe that this is a community and that you believe that, that ultimately communities can influence other communities, then then what a great way to, to start to, to align yourself with, with uh, the, the sporting community or the, the whatever the venue is. And, and we think that's where the magic happens. So if you can position yourself uh, as, a, as a venue or as a sports team to expand that experience to make it much more uh, memorable and longer than just that game. If you're a brand that can interact with with that that team and and uh, and develop a community there, then ultimately the, the, the great stuff happens when you go back to your other communities, whether that's your family, your friends, your your, your workplace, and then you 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 influence that community uh, from which you learned into your original. So it's kind of a pay it forward. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair way to say it. It's uh, it's it's really just a, a scenario where uh, we all have a multitude of influences on uh, all the time, 
how do we how do we work with those influences and, and how do we how do we utilize those influences? That, that's amazing. So obviously it's clear that uh, the naysayers are wrong. There's a large market to be touched at these live events, and 50 million people in one year going to college football games is, is nothing to scoff at. Um, so knowing that this demographic is there, knowing that that market is there, ready to be uh, touched. How can venues create a value add and, and actually capitalize on that mm -hmm. to the point where they're actually generating revenue? Because that's what's all about. Yeah, yeah, and let's let's be, be as frank that it, it is a return on investment, right? Uh, whether that's time or money. The, the, the ultimately, we um, we we think that, that there's a, a great deal of opportunity outside the walls of the venues. Uh, whether most know we're talking about sporting events here today, mm -hmm. but uh, most venues have have their typical revenue models as the whether or not it's uh, seat sales, concessions, uh, sponsorships, uh, they, there's, there's a multitude of different ways that they, they generate revenue. And they have a physical plan associated with that. Well, we think that sometimes they don't look at all the different assets that they have um, in the most, well, with, with an opportunity to generate revenue outside of what their physical plan is. And, and we would contend that, that through parking spaces or, or communal areas, there's ways to, to expand that experience for both uh, and, and ultimately generate revenue. For, for them and, uh, and other brands. And of, of course for uh, brands and, and marketing companies that are representing those brands, um, your, you know, your sponsorship is, is the main source of, of that partnership and how to create uh, ROI. But um, what do they need to be doing to actually capitalize on that investment in that sponsorship, make the most of it, and uh, if you aren't able to fully commit to a sponsorship, how, as a brand, do you align yourself with that event and that team and get in there and make the most of it? Yeah, yeah I think that you on, on two fronts. I mean, if you're a sponsor and <coughs> part of your sponsorship package is to have an immersion or a, a marketing area outside of the, the footprint, um, sometimes it's an afterthought, right? It, right. It's, it's not necessarily where you're looking to do your messaging, and and, uh, and I think that's a, that's a lost opportunity. Uh, then in the same breath, there are certain people that can't step up to that or don't want to step up to a, a, a full sponsorship package, but they do want to be aligned with that brand. How do they create their experience, and how do they interact with those people? So so the, the answer is uh, is with a, with, a, with a logical, continuous effort, or a concerted effort is a better way to say it, in that, um, we we look to to build these environments or these areas with with a purpose, and it, uh, we talk about the big blue spike. And, and, mm -hmm. and what we mean by when we say that is is it's a place that that someone can say, "Oh, I'll meet you over at the big blue spike," or "I'll meet you over at this event," or "I'll meet you over at, at, at that experience." And by doing that, you become part of the subculture associated with that that team and that event, and it's a, it's a very powerful experience. But in this case, it's it's actually outside of the mm -hmm. stadium. Yeah. So you're you're essentially as a venue. You're expanding your footprint almost um, by creating these destinations. I guess is what you would call. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it, it's it's creating um, experiences or, or 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 venues and destinations for um, for expansion of that experience. So whether or not it's before the game or it's after the game or it's both, uh, there there are places for people to uh, to interact. Um, with like-minded people most of the time, whether or not it's you know uh, people who are are uh, looking to, to to spend some time before it, whether or not they're looking to um, create a VIP hospitality area to do business, uh, th there's always different goals in in those those uh, those approaches. But um, but we, we work on a multitude of fronts, and I think what you're looking at on the screen right now is is something that we created for IMG uh, called the Playmakers Club. Uh, and and again, it was just that it was it was to be that ultimate VIP experience that. Um, they could take a round to college sporting events and, and uh, put into ticket package sales and, and do as a as a promotion for for sponsorships uh, for some of their clients. So um, so it, it, you know it's it's a very powerful experience to create something that's three stories, hang uh, right. handling of 350 to 400 people um, with with the, the inner workings that we put in there, such as uh, band 20, 8 by 20 foot uh, you know. Uh, Interactive or uh, the, the screen, uh, a multitude of different things that really, really built that experience for them. Right. So, so obviously this is a pretty, pretty extravagant space. Uh, as a venue, I mean, a lot of stadiums are. There's a lot going on outside of a stadium, but it's not necessarily a uniform uh, destination. So, what does it take to create that exceptional experience and that exceptional destination? Uh, not only that brands want to activate it, mm -hmm. but that fans are going to want to go to so those brands can reach their demographic. 
what has to go into that. Yeah, no, it, it, it is very much a, a, a concerted effort to, to do that. Uh, and, and what we work on with, uh, if we're working from the venue side, is uh, is to create that, that interactive space. Let's, let's be honest, we have a, a multitude of different things that are, that are being uh, uh, being pushed to us on a marketing message every day. Uh, you alluded to it earlier with a, with our, all of our devices. Um, so so we need to we need to have a sort of effort of a place that is iconic and uh, and functional. And, and depending on uh, the venue and the footpaths, uh, the, the, the available areas and, and a multitude of different events, we, we work with them to to try to figure out how to, to best take advantage of that. But it is it is through. Um, Environments that aren't the prototypical uh, right. experience. So, so you don't want uh, the white, white tent, tent village, yeah. Yeah, right? I mean, so, so the, what happens when you do that? You get people uh, putting up uh, small banners, giving away little tchotchkes and things of that nature, and it, it really is, is underwhelming. Uh, so, so, so we work very hard to try to be counterintuitive to that, and, and even to the effect of of, of work in the, the juxtaposition between uh, uh, what people are normal uh, and used to seeing and, and what what we produce. So. Yeah, and you talked about giving away the trash keys and whatnot. And, I mean, we've been to a lot of events, mm -hmm. uh, sporting and otherwise. A lot of brands and agencies are still investing pretty heavily on, on having some brand reps standing outside, handing out these freebies um, and these giveaways and things like that. Uh, people are doing it. It's pretty standard practice. Mm -hmm. well, what's the real effectiveness and ROI on something like that? Yeah, and, and each brand has its own uh, intent, and, and we, we fully respect that. What we like to do, and we try to encourage brands to do, is to interact with the, the, the intended audience at the venue um, with, with, it, with, with intent. I mean, if that's a fair way to say it. I know that's simplistic, but, but like when we worked for Electrolux, it was um, a situation where they came to a local Panthers game, and they, we had built a test kitchen for them where uh, they gave away uh, tailgating food. So, so that's a very intuitive uh, course of action, uh, although you're not, you're not ready or, or uh, thinking towards a, a, a test kitchen to be, uh, be at a Panthers game. But ultimately, we were able to give them or, or encourage them, or they, they, they gave away um, food that was, that was, that was uh, in line with the experience. I think it's much more powerful to do that than, than leave behind that you have to figure out what to do with. And, and how, within this space, how did that interact with the fans that were there? Opposed to, you know, how did how did you come up with uh, this particular experience for that particular event? Yeah, so so um, I think that, that it goes back to your question about how do you how do you draw attention to, to the to the the, the, the structure. Sure. And, and we work on a multitude of fronts. So, so uh, we talked about juxtaposition a minute ago. Uh, very often in today's day and age, there's a, the bigger, brighter, louder kind of mentality uh, runs prevalent. And, and we sometimes, or we encourage people to, to look uh, against that. Uh, if you have uh, a lot of busyness, sometimes cleaner, simpler, and, mm -hmm. and um, and more more sleek is is the, the better look because it'll grab that attention and by doing that that's the first step in trying to get them into that environment and ultimately having that experience that you're looking for so so we worked uh, hand in hand with Electrolux to, to to work on some of those design principles and, and still be respectful of their functionality that and that's perfect that actually leads me right to my next question so you're at this incredible space there's a lot going on uh, there's all these brands vying for your attention there's of course the fans are going crazy mm -hmm. excited about the game. Um, with all these big bright colors and whatnot, you know, I know when I'm there, um, I, I'm at an event like that, I'll stop and I'll look at something because it catches my eye, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to engage with that. So at, how do you create these spaces and keep people just kind of popping in and popping out and actually stay and, and interact and engage with with the experience and commit to that experience. Great, great question. So, so what um, we, we look at it in our design process, but well, actually one of the first questions we ask in our design process is how long do you want people to interact with the, with the environments? We have some people who say you know, 30 seconds a minute, some people say two to five minutes, some people say 20 minutes or even a multiple hours like we did for IMG. I mean, that was an experience where somebody was going to be there. Uh, we opened up 11 for, uh, I think it was a, a 7 o'clock game time. I mean, so the, the, I mean, the, how, do you, how do you build that experience? But what you're looking at um, uh, on the screen right now is, was a project we worked with Turner on for MB uh, 2K14 in Washington Square, uh, New York City, to roll out or kick off the, the, this year's NBA uh, season. Uh, well, um, 
then uh, the, what what we had to work there with is is to try to, to figure out how to not only get people into the environment mm -hmm. but also um, allow it, them to interact with brand ambassadors in anticipation of working with a, or playing a game to be able to get out of there uh, in a reasonable time period as well. But but it's that it's that, that intrigue is that that mystery. It's uh, it's working with some of the design features that we, we typically use um, to to help help encourage that interaction. Well, yeah. So I feel like it's a lot more of that. Uh pull strategy than push like it like it used to be where I know you, the, something you tell me all the time is, is um, people don't want to be sold to mm -hmm. anymore so you know how do you get out there and get people's attention without, without seeming pushy and, and kind of get them to gravitate mm -hmm. towards you yeah, so so I think that that's a good point. I mean, we all get sold to every day, right? right? And I think that, uh, or I know that that when I'm sold to, I immediately put up um, uh, somewhat of a defense. So so when we're we're, we're creating these environments and we're encouraging uh, venues to to help expand this footprint, it needs to be not an intuitive sale. It needs to be a, a situation where you're aligning the brand w with that experience. We're, we're we're creating an additional experience to the to the game. Um, and, and then, then align the brand to that experience. So, so it, yeah, it, we, we often talk about what it is that you do and it, whether or not it's the, the, the type of food or the, right. the, the way they gave away at uh, Electrolux or the, the gaming uh, component that we, we worked with uh, for Turner. Uh, the, the, there's, there's, there's ways to make sure that you're not uh, being counterintuitive, and, and it, we always warn against that. We don't, although every brand has its own or uh, mm -hmm. marketing message, sometimes there's ways to work within that, that marketing message to make sure that we're talking to the right audience. Yeah, and I, and I think that's just it. I mean, it's about being personal, I believe, um, but as a, if, you're, if you're organizing one of these events, um, you're often doing it on a much larger scale. I know Hyundai specifically, um, the Show You the Loyalty Tour that, that we did, went to 26 different games. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's a lot of different fans with a lot of different demographics, a lot of different cultures. Yeah. Uh, if you're organizing it, obviously you can't do a different event at every place, but um, what, what would you tell someone that's, that's putting this kind of thing together to make sure that they're engaging at each market mm -hmm. on a personal level? Yeah, I think Hyundai was a good example. Different set of sport teams Every week yeah, every for week. the whole season, and not one but two, right? Two two different existing existing tours. So for that, that's that brand awareness, and and whatever we did give away was branded for that specific team. It wasn't Hyundai because Hyundai looked to be part of that experience. They realized that if you're at the University of Georgia, you're a Georgia fan. Uh -huh. uh, you know, let, let's help embrace the idea that you're a Georgia fan, and Hyundai is associated with Georgia fans. Uh, if you're in Texas, it's the same experience. So, so we we uh, actually changed the branding package for every single event. We changed the the giveaways for every event, and each one was dedicated a little bit differently depending on what it is that that the ultimate uh, the, the end end uh, participant was. Right. So, I mean, a, a lot of go going hand in hand with that. Um, in the world we live in today, you know, you're talking about getting people to look up from their screens. Uh, you see a lot of tech at these events, whether it's a trade show, sporting event, what have you. Um, is that the way to go for an activity to try and automate that? Is it all tech? Is it all branding? I mean, what's the yeah, and what's it, the go to? And, it, and there is no no true go to. I mean, I think there is there there needs to be interaction. Uh, some people think that static images are much more uh, memorable these days than video because we get so much video coming at us. It, it really just depends on on how we want to work through that. And we work uh, also with our clients to to have them navigate through an experience. Uh, when we're talking about brands and marketing companies, and it goes for for the larger uh, experience as well. How do you work through it? What do you want people to see, and what do you want them to, to experience? So, so there, there's uh, there, there's always a combination. You need tech, you need uh, data capture, you need a multitude of different fronts to help justify the, the ROI and, and truly get ROI. But uh, it, it, it's it's a scenario where sometimes simple is better, and and uh, it just really depends on, on how you how you you uh, interact with that experience. Yeah, and and with Obviously, you've had a lot of experience uh, doing these activations of a lot of different kinds of sporting events, different sports, uh, different places around the country. Um, so what, in your experience, has been kind of either your biggest challenge with that or where you found that you're able to create the most benefit um, in an environment? What, what is it that you'll do differently? To create more benefit at sporting events specifically. Yeah, I, I think that, that, that you hit on a couple different points throughout the, the, the talk here, but uh, ultimately it's it's grabbing attention. It, it, it's a situation where we we we're so accustomed to certain things in, in certain uh, uh -huh. certain environments. How do you do something different? 
right? How, how do you stand out? Then, then once you get an initial attention from them, how do you how do you get them into the environment, right? How do, mm -hmm. how do you draw them in so that you can ultimately start the conversation, whether or not it's on a grand scale or on an individual brand scale? And then ultimately from there, when you're in there, how do you disseminate your information so that they will then become part of your community? And if, if they are believing your community or they're influencing, uh, you're in, they're influenced by your community, then ultimately they go out and spread it to their community. And that's where the, the ripple effect happens in, in this type of type of world. All right. Well, I'm here. We're about out of time. Uh, is there anything else you want to share? Any last minute thoughts? No. Tough loss uh, today. The world. Yeah. Back. Yeah. Uh, but it just it just amazes me. I mean, if you, could you imagine if you were there? Yeah. I, you would be telling stories oh, till the till the till the day you pass on, right? And, <laughs> and it wouldn't be just about that game. It'd be about the lead up to that game. It'd be about your travel home. It'd be about the interaction and experiences that you had there. So if you're a brand, I mean, what a great experience to, to align yourself, win or loss, right. with, with the energy that's associated with that. And I think that that's what the powerful thing is, whether or not you're a professional sport team, a professional venue or team, uh, whether or not you're college or, or even Little League. Right. I think that there's ways to, to really align brands and to have venues uh, expand that experience. So. That's great. Well, uh, guys, thank you. If you have any questions, we'd love to continue this discussion on Twitter. Uh, you can reach us at Boxman Studios. Use the hashtag Boxman Live. If you have questions for David uh, about what Boxman Studios does, or we'd love to hear what you love to see at sporting events outside the walls and the different experiences you guys have had. Also, if you're going to be at the ALSD conference, Boxman Studios will be there along with David. He has a few speech speaking engagements where you can see him expand on this topic. Um, we're going to be at booth 44. Feel free to drop by. And if you'd like to set up a meeting, you can contact David directly at dcampbell at boxmanstudios.com. Um, we'll put that screen up in just a minute uh, when we end. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, David. Thanks for that. Guys, can't wait to see you again next time. Thanks.